So in this segment, we're going to be talking about firms hit by new Brexit red tape as IT system stops trucks. So, you know, it's not a surprise the IT system isn't working. I think I spoke to All Shorts a bit at some point, um, like a month ago. He talked about the, I think it was the Chief system. It's really outdated and um, it's hella old and it doesn't work. It's not fit for purpose. And the simple fact is... Um, yeah, you know, companies haven't had a lot of time to mess around with the IT systems to get used to them. And once you've put a system in place, I mean, conservative governments have been really bad at IT systems. The universal credit was a disaster in its implementation in terms of the IT side of it and obviously the amounts you receive. But um, yeah, that's a tangent. Anyways, we'll talk about this article. UK traders are falling foul of a new IT system of policing goods crossing the English Channel as companies grapple with a fresh wave of post-Brexit red tape. As of January 1st, imports from the EU must be processed using the so-called Goods Vehicle Movement System, GVMS, yet hauliers have encountered setbacks such as shipments not loading on the system and reference codes not being accepted. So that genuinely looks like an IT system, shipments not loading on the system and reference codes not being accepted so as long as those reference codes are good like they're the ones that they were given that this very much looks like an IT system failure which is what the article talks about Japanese automaker Honda motor sorry I didn't mean that in a in a race away I meant Honda that's a I think that's how oh, what's his name man Ch- not Chancellor Shepard the guy from Simpsons the uh, the uh, the guy above Skinner here's how he says it a Honda is among companies that have seen cargoes hit so far. We've got a whole bunch of lorries that aren't clearing because something isn't working and it's not incompetence on our part, said Steve Cock, director of the customs consultancy at the customs house. And it's very funny that Steve here is trying to distance himself, saying it wasn't incompetence, it's just an IT system not working. I guess because, again, people probably pay him a lot of money in order to help with um, getting imports into the UK, so he kind of has to distance himself, but it's quite funny. I found it anyways. So, uh, Customs House, who had ha- who has had freight waiting to enter Britain since New Year's Day, it's going to cheese off a lot of people and have a lot of additional charges for vehicles that aren't getting to the UK because lorry drivers they don't make money unless they're moving and have stuff in the back. So essentially, they're stuck. They're not moving, so they're not making any money, which is a huge problem. <sighs> not to mention these companies look like they're going to be charged as well. The new IT system represents the latest headache for importers due to Brexit, which erected new bureaucratic hurdles between the UK and EU. Its largest trading partner, trade with the bloc has suffered due to the extra red tape and is about 15% lower than it would have been if the UK had stayed in the bloc, according to modelling by the Centre for European Reform, a think tank. I think the further problem some of the viewers talked about is that... uh, um, you know, these trade figures account NI as part of the UK for trade when it really shouldn't um, because they're part of the EU single market for goods, uh, EU single market and customs union for goods, not a part of GBs. So they go on a bit more. Her Majesty HMRC, the government's body responsible for the administration at the border, who are vastly underfunded, don't have the money to deal with it, said in the statement it's aware of a small amount of user errors with some of the new customs processes as traders and hauliers adjust to new controls which are expected and are addressing. The problem is, I think they were saying like because Do- the Dover Calais crossing deals with thousands upon thousands of trucks, any small delay causes huge problems with the whole um, the whole chain essentially, um, you know the whole road, the whole crossing. And so the problem is if you add four minutes to each truck, you know you're adding um, a ton of time on for each lorry. And if you're having IT problems, which we're looking at now, you're talking maybe minutes or hours to deal with it. And if it's blocking one of the lanes, that's a huge problem. They have built inland facilities to deal with this stuff. But again, you know, if you're a lorry driver and you're stuck here for like hours or days without, you know, anything happening because IT system failures, you're not going to want to come back. And that's going to cause huge problems in itself. To be sure, freight activity is currently low due to the seasonal low in trading, which will pick up in the next few weeks. We've gone through, you know, holidays and bank holidays, weekends, etc. Current volumes through the port of Dover, Britain's busiest gateway, are comparable to recent years, according to Tim uh, Reardon, head of the EU exit at Dover. Which is interesting that figures have stayed similar to past Januarys. Industry figures accept, expect activity to ramp up in the coming weeks, which will be a truer test of the post-Brexit arrangements. Japanese automaker Honda, which was one of the companies affected by the uh, Brexit by the new processes, set uh, with a ship. Sorry, Japanese automaker Honda 
was one of the companies affected by the new processes, with the shipment of power products and parts held up at the UK border to some goods being incorrectly coded. The shipment has since been released. And you've got to think, right, They car manufacturers rely heavily on the just-in-time supply chain, so they'll get the parts just as they need them. What happens now if, say, you can't get access to, say, engines, right? Say the engines are manufactured in the EU. That means your whole supply chain, or sorry, your manufacturing process for your car is stuck. What do you do at that point? What do you do with the staff? Do you, do you send them home because there's nothing for them to do? They can't actually install the engine? Um, what, what do you do at that point if you're Honda? Do you move them to a different part of the production facility? So you produce, say, um, more bits leading up to the engine needing to be installed which is going to have inefficiencies because you're going to have specific people who deal just with the engines. What do you do at that point if you're Honda? Or do you go back to the government and say, yo, we need more money because your import system isn't working? Some teething problems are not unexpected as the UK's custom system comes online. Honda said in a statement, we're currently looking into the details behind this. Um, Again, it's going to keep happening. It's not going to be as bad as this time around, but once the trade volumes pick up kind of more towards April and the summer, it's going to be a disaster. Another business struggling to move goods into Britain is um, Angelos Paniotos Windfall Logistics, who have a shipment of Arizona iced tea. Now, you would think that Arizona iced tea would come from Arizona, which is in America, but no, it's probably manufactured in the EU, hence why we can't get them in. Which retails in Tesco PLC supermarkets is stuck in the EU. Uh, uh, This person here, what was their first name? Angelos. Angelus said he has generated the correct paperwork for the goods but gets an error message when he tries to log it in the government system so clearly IT issues maybe he has the wrong code but I doubt it um, Arizona iced teas apparently these are decent not a sponsored post but um, yeah dude if you want to send me some free iced teas let me know quite expensive though um, probably because they are imported and they're going to face more checks but generally I think they are quite expensive but um, yeah I know someone who's a fan of these iced teas but uh, yeah I mean You've got hauliers facing problems now, and what happens when they just give up or they just send less volume to the UK because it's a massive headache and they look at other markets within the EU or even third countries who have got this stuff figured out? What happens then? You know, the UK is going to struggle more, but um, yeah, I don't know what more to say apart from let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.